There is no doubt that Ali Abdal's editing style has changed the game when it comes to short form editing. But how does his team actually do it? Well, today we're gonna to be doing a deep dive into Ali Abdal's short form editing style so that you can take inspiration and incorporate some of these techniques into your own content. The overall game plan for this video is to break down and show you how to edit three different sequences. The first one being a talking head sequence, the second one being a text animation sequence, and lastly, the third one is a graphic styled sequence. In terms of the assets that I'm gonna be using throughout this tutorial, I'll leave a link in the description to a free resource pack that includes fonts, animated backgrounds, assets, overlays, sound effects, all of which you can download and edit along with. And just to emphasize, you can get that completely for free. Just thank me later. Now, before we do anything, we have to set ourselves up ready to edit. Now, personally, I'm an Adobe girl, so I'm gonna be using Premiere Pro and After Effects to edit, so I will launch those up first. I'll mainly be using Premiere to piece the video together. So for my composition settings, I'm going to create a vertical nine by 16 sequence at 30 frames per second. I'm also gonna import my assets pack here too, just for easy access. Right, now that's out of the way, it's time to get cracking. First up, we have the talking head sequence. Ali uses these sequences a lot, particularly in the beginning of his video to hook people in and to gain their curiosity. If we take the four things I wish I knew in my 20s short, for example, you can see that there is a lot going on in order to stop the scrolling thumb. To break it down, we have Ali cut out and rotoscoped from his background. At the top, we also have a textured paper rip that animates left to right in stop motion fashion. And we also have some text animations going on as well. To replicate this, the assets that I'm gonna be using are a paper rip, an animated halftone texture and the mums typewriter font. To start off, I'm gonna add my video onto my timeline and then duplicate the video onto the third layer. And you'll see why I'm doing this in just a moment. Next, we're gonna use the rotoscope tool to cut out our subject from the background. So to do this, we'll need to right click on our top clip and then replace it with an After Effects composition. Once in, you'll then need to click this icon on the top toolbar, double click on your footage and then paint over your subject. Once finished, your selection will have a pink outline where it will be cut out. But if you've accidentally included something here that you don't want to be in your selection, then you can remove it by holding Alt on your keyboard until you see the red brush and then you can paint it out. By using the arrow keys, you can then go frame by frame to make any minor adjustments to your selection. But once you're happy, you can then click freeze, save it and then return to Premiere. Now that our background's been removed and you can see, as shown here, it's now time to do the paper rip effect. To do this, I'm gonna bring the paper rip image onto the second video layer, scale it down ever so slightly, and then reposition it to the top of the frame. Then I'm gonna right click, nest the clip, and then rename it paper rip. And then I'm gonna open it up in its nested sequence. To add a little bit more texture, I'm then gonna add an animated halftone overlay. And to ensure that the texture doesn't spill out of the rip, you can then use the pen tool here to mask out all around it, just like so. And to make the layer blend in a little bit more, I'm also gonna lower the opacity and change the blend mode here too. After that, we can then return to our main composition and then scale the paper rip up to size. To animate the paper rip into frame, we can then click on the position stopwatch to create some keyframes. So one at the beginning for when the paper rip is completely out of frame, and then the second one later as the paper rip appears into frame just like so. Okay, great, so that's all well and good, but next up we have the text animations to tackle. So to do this, we'll need to hit shortcut T on our keyboard to create a new text layer and then type out our text. After that's done, we'll then need to right click on our text layer and then bring it into After Effects to apply some more advanced effects. To create the same text animation, we'll firstly need to make sure we go into our text layer and then apply the typewriter effect onto our text. Next, we can then toggle this down and then adjust the keyframes to speed up or slow down the animation but I think I'm gonna leave it like this just for now. To create the slight scale up effect, we'll need to then toggle down in the animator section and then click add, property, scale, and then hit the stopwatch to create some keyframes so that the value goes from zero to 100 a few frames later. But we're missing that jittery jiggle effect. Well, the best way that I could find to do this was to add the turbulent displace effect onto your text and then change these values to 15 and 10 and then toggle down the evolutions tab. And whilst holding Alt on your keyboard, if you click the random seed stopwatch, 
This will then bring up the expressions window at the bottom here. To create this jitter effect, we'll then need to type in this expression equation, and you can pause the video now to take a note of this, but this will include a posterized time and a random generator effect. After this, you should notice this wiggly jiggly effect has been added onto your text, but if you want it more subtle or more harsh, then you can obviously change these values in the expression. To save time in future, you can then select this effect and then in the top toolbar hit animation and then save animation effect. And then if we save it into the After Effects presets folder, then this will automatically import as a custom preset, which we can then drag and drop onto text layers in future edits. But overall, if we play our talking head sequence back, it should be looking pretty familiar to our reference video and ultimately it should be giving off those Ali Abdal sort of vibes. Now you might have noticed that in Ali's example he uses some crumpled paper assets, but I'll delve into how to do that effect a little bit later on in this video. Moving on, the next sequence that we'll be covering is Ali's text animation sequences. As a guide, we'll be referring to Ali's top journal prompt short to refer back to. To break the sequence down, you can see that Ali uses a plain coloured background with multiple animated texture overlays. On top of this, we then have a peeling tape title and a text section which animates in much like a typewriter and also has this jitter effect to it. To recreate this, the assets that I'm going to be using are as follows. A newspaper clipping, an animated halftone texture, a dust and scratches overlay, an image of a tape segment, the mum's typewriter font for the title, and the nitty, 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 nice, um, typewriter cameo font for the main text section. To begin, we'll need to create a new colour map by right clicking new item colour map. And then I'm going to be using this colour hex here to match Ali's example. On top of this, I'm then going to add three different overlays. So the first one being the newspaper graphic, which I'm going to drag onto my timeline. And then I'm going to lower the opacity right down to something around 3%. And then change the blend mode to lighten. On top of that, I'm then going to add a half tone texture, which again, I'm going to reposition, lower the opacity for and change the blend mode. And finally, for the third layer, I'm going to use a dust and scratches overlay, which is going to add some more texture to our overall background. Side note, it is a good idea to nest those background layers together, just so you can get your timeline looking a little bit more tidier. After this, I'm then going to add the tape image onto our timeline and then reposition this to be somewhat central. To do the tape peeling effect, we can then replace our image with an After Effects composition and then apply the page turn effect onto that layer. Here we can then adjust the fold position to peel the tape off and then on screen just like so. So you can drag the tape all the way off screen, click on the stopwatch to create a keyframe and then if you move along a few frames and then drag the tape back on screen, it should create this peel on animation just like so. To allow for a smoother motion, we can then select those keyframes and set them to ease in so it can come in a little bit more naturally. But once we're happy with that, we can then save it and return to Premiere. Now it's time to do our text animation. So to do this, I'm going to hit shortcut T on my keyboard and then type out all of the text. For context, I'm going to make two text layers here. So one for the title and then another one for the main body of text. It's worth noting that for the main body of text, you'll need to play around with the character and line spacing. But these are the overall values and settings that I apply to the text to get mine to align with Ali's example. Okay, so now we've got our frame looking good. It's now time to animate it all to make it a little bit more engaging. For the title, I'm going to add a simple fade in. And then for the main body of text, I'm going to right click, bring this into After Effects, and then add that custom preset that we made earlier onto our text to give it that jittered typewriter effect. So overall, if we watch it back, it should look something like this. looks pretty good right and lastly we have the graphic style sequence which seems to be Ali's editing signature these days if we take the best books about money short for example we can see that it combines crumpled paper assets on an animated background which creates this cool DIY stop-motion style effect in order to replicate this the first thing that we'll need to do is to repeat what we did for the text animation sequence and create a new background and then add some overlays over the top just to give it that extra bit of texture. Now we've got our background locked down, it's now time to turn our attention to the paper crumpled assets. For these, there are two ways in which you can do this. The easy and kind of lazy way of doing this is to find assets online that you can download and use. 
and I'll put some in the assets pack for you to refer to. Or alternatively, you can always make these yourself if you're feeling that extra little bit adventurous. To achieve this effect yourself, you'll need to compile and print off the images that you want to use, cut them out and then place them on a plain surface. Just make sure that your scene is well lit here because you won't want any nasty casting shadows on your images. Next, you'll then need to take photos one by one as you crumple or fold the image one bit at a time. After this, you'll then need to remove the background of your photos, whether that's using Photoshop or another background remover, and then bring all of those images into your editing software for you to start piecing together. Here we can then edit similarly to a stop motion sequence. So we can start off by using the completely crumpled image first, and then we can move along a few frames and then add our next image and so on and so on and so on. For context, the last photo that we took should be the first in our editing sequence. And then the very first photo that we took where the image is entirely visible should be the last in our editing sequence. Just make sure that all of your images are lined up perfectly because this is what's gonna make your sequence look more seamless. After we've mapped out all of our images, if we play it back, you can see that we have this cool DIY paper crumple effect, which looks pretty sick if I do say so myself. We can then repeat this process for our other assets and then add them onto our animated background and reposition them to fit neatly into frame. Now we have all of our sequences edited, it's now time to go back in and to add some sound effects like risers, hits, whooshes, paper rips, camera shutters, things like that. Not only does sound design get often overlooked, but it plays such a big part in a good video. So make sure not to leave it out and to spend some time on it because it really does pack a punch. Whew, okay, so there we have it. Three Ali Abdal editing sequences. Just remember that us editors should seek inspiration from other editing styles. So take this as a starting point, but make sure to add your own creative flair because that is essentially what's gonna make your content shine the most. But that's all for today. I hope this video was of help. If it was, then consider liking it and subscribing to join the Fever Days gang. Um, we recently just hit 1000 subscribers, which is absolutely bonkers in my mind but i think i've spoken way too much for today so i'm out and i'll see you in the next video see ya